Shouldn't these 15 actors be in jail? Here's why. Jake Paul, physical and sexual assault. Born in Ohio, Jake Joseph Paul made a name for himself by posting videos on Vine, eventually achieving 5.3 million followers and over 2 billion video views. His YouTube channel came to life in May 2014, and he sensibly parlayed his social media fame into movie and TV appearances. By 2018, he was doing well enough to be ranked second on the Forbes list of highest paid YouTubers. And in 2022, he got featured on Forbes' list of highest paid athletes. Jake Paul began his amateur boxing career in 2018, going pro the following year. He's been in several fights, including against former UFC champ Anderson Silva. Now, let's focus on why he's in this video. In April 2021, two women alleged that he had groped and sexually assaulted them. With what happened to Cosby and Weinstein, this may become a serious crime if confirmed. Be sure to stick to the end to see the long list of reasons why Snoop Dogg should be in jail. If you thought that Jake Paul story was crazy, wait till you hear this next one. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more amazing videos. Ezra Miller, Assault, Weird Behavior. Ezra Miller is possibly best known for portraying The Flash and they have also put in some excellent work for the Fantastic Beasts franchise. With the release of After School 2008, they dropped out of high school and focused on their Hollywood career. In April 2020, they strangled a woman at a bar, and in early 2022, they were arrested two separate times in Hawaii for assaulting and insulting karaoke bar patrons and getting violent after being asked to leave a private gathering. But it is possibly Miller's relationship with Dakota Iron Eyes that raises the most eyebrows and triggers the most revulsion. Miller established a curious relationship with this girl when she was 12 and they were 23, and is said to have been intimate with her. Her parents have accused Miller of using violence, drugs, paranoia, intimidation, the threat of violence, and fear to maintain control over their child and of manipulating and grooming her. Miller has also been called out for pestering and behaving inappropriately with another 12-year-old since April this year, has reportedly housed a woman and her three kids on a Vermont farm where drugs and guns abound. In August 2022, they were charged with a May 2022 burglary, during which bottles of wine were liberated. Jesse Smollett, Hate Crime Hoax Jesse was born in California, and several of his siblings are in the acting profession. His show business career was kick-started with modeling gigs, with bit parts coming in Mo Better Blues, 1990, and New Jack City, 1991. The biggest break of his life came in 2014 when he was cast as Jamal Lyon in Empire. But in January 2019, he told the cops that a couple of guys had assaulted him and mocked his sexuality. The whole world erupted in outrage and a hunt began to find the men responsible and bring them to justice. But an investigation speedily uncovered the fact that the whole thing was a hoax that had been staged so Empire could up his pay. This is business! In February 2019, a grand jury charged him with filing a false police report. But in March of that year, all charges were dropped in exchange for his performing 16 hours of community service and forfeiting his $10,000 bond. In February 2020, he was again indicted for filing false police reports, was found guilty of five of the six counts, and sentenced to 150 days in county jail. Unlike Mark Wahlberg's 45-day sentence coming up later in this video, plus a $25,000 fine and a payment of $120,000 to the city of Chicago. James Franco, Sexual Misconduct Born in 1978 to a father who worked as a businessman and a mother who was an infrequent actress, the young James was said to be a whiz at math and even interned at Lockheed Martin. He dropped out of college in the first year to pursue an acting career and, after bit parts, found fame in Freaks and Geeks before snagging a Golden Globe Award plus an Emmy and Screen Actors Guild Award nominations for his performance in James Dean, 2001. Spider-Man 2002 suddenly made him a global phenomenon, while Spider-Man 2 2004, Spider-Man 3 2007, Pineapple Express 2008, 
127 Hours, 2010, and Oz the Great and Powerful, 2013, helped add a solid heft to his reputation. Now, James Franco has long faced multiple and serious sexual misconduct allegations. In 2014, he tried to persuade a 17-year-old to meet him in a hotel room, and in 2018, five women accused him of behaving in very appropriate ways while running his Studio 4 school. In 2019, a lawsuit accused him of holding exploitative auditions and film shoots and stated that his acting school was little more than a scheme to provide him and his male collaborators with a pool of young female performers that they could take advantage of. James Franco has since admitted sleeping with his students. Bill Cosby – Sexual Crimes Aplenty Though he revolutionized comedy as we know it and won awards and accolades by the boatload, the fact that Bill Cosby was a sexual predator and had been for decades was something that lots of people knew but weren't willing to speak publicly about. In October 2014, a comic went on stage and made an insightful joke about the whole thing, and all of a sudden, the many women that Cosby had abused got the gumption to stand up and make their voices heard. Many women have publicly accused him of non-consensually luring them into intimate acts, with several being minors. The weight of the allegations has led to reruns of his shows being pulled and organizations rushing to distance themselves from him. Due to the statute of limitations frustrating the prosecution of most of his alleged crimes, Cosby would eventually be tried for the sexual assault of a single lady and, after being found guilty, was sentenced to three years of imprisonment, with the conviction being later vacated on a technicality. Conviction vacation or not, he still faces many civil lawsuits. Robert Blake – Murder Robert Blake was reportedly physically and sexually abused by both his parents, and that made for a very unhappy childhood. After a short stint in the army, he spent a couple of years doped out of his mind before cleaning himself up and getting acting lessons. Numerous movie roles then followed, and in 1967, In Cold Blood earned him a couple of Oscar nominations, while Beretta, 1975 to 1978, got him an Emmy. Now, in May 2001, Robert Blake took his wife out for dinner, and while she waited for him in the car, someone fatally shot her. He was arrested in April 2002 and charged with the murder, with two former stuntmen telling the cops that Blake had asked them to knock off his wife. Put on trial, he was acquitted of the murder charges, but the children of the deceased filed and won a wrongful death suit, with the courts asking him to fork over $30 million to them, though this payout was on appeal reduced to $15 million. Roman Polanski – Child Rape and Sexual Assault Born in 1933, Polanski endured the horrors of the Second World War and after the war attended a Polish film school, making his acting and directorial debut shortly after. In 1962, Knife in the Water earned him his first Academy Award nomination. He moved to France and then to the US, and in August 1969, his pregnant wife and others were murdered. Chinatown 1974 is considered one of his premier movies, and 11 Academy Award nominations prove its solidity. Tess 1979 got three Oscars, with other movies like The Pianist 2002, The Ghost Rider 2010, An Officer and a Spy 2019 receiving heavy praise. In 1977, Roman Polanski was arrested and charged with luring with sleep-inducing substances and assaulting a 13-year-old. Though there was a plea bargain arrangement, according to which he would get probation and be sentenced to time served, Polanski opted to become a fugitive after learning he would be given a 50-year sentence. He has also been accused of having assaulted multiple females, some of whom were very much under the age of consent. Brandy Norwood – Vehicular Homicide Brandy Rayana Norwood had most of the 90s in her back pocket, and most of us know her for The Boy Is Mine, a Grammy-winning duet with Monica that stayed 13 weeks atop the Billboard Hot 100. Born in Mississippi, she's Ray J's older sister. Brandy began singing almost before she could crawl, being a staple in church choirs and entering talent shows by age 11. 
early in the 90s, as her debut album was being put together, she was cast in Thea, an ABC sitcom that ran for 19 episodes. Her eponymous album saw the light of day in September 1994, eventually made it to number 20 on the Billboard 200, and snagged a couple Grammy nods. In 1997, she starred in Cinderella, with her second album coming out the following year. There have been other studio albums and movie roles since then, but we will leave that and focus on what brought Brandy into this video. Now, just like Matthew Broderick later on in this video, Brandy in December 2006 was speeding on a Los Angeles freeway when she collided with and killed the driver of a Toyota, with the two sons of the driver being severely injured. While Brandy was never arrested or charged, multiple lawsuits have been filed and all have been settled out of court for considerable sums. Jay-Z – Rival Ventilation Yes, Jay-Z is an actor too. Born Sean Corey Carter in New York, Jay-Z parlayed his early interest in music into rap battle performances and the like. With no studio interested in giving him a deal, he formed a record label and sold CDs from his car, with his debut album getting to number 23 on the Billboard 200, and serving as a foretaste of things to come. His third studio album won a Grammy, set records, and shut up critics, and he currently has 13 studio albums to his name, plus four collaborative albums all of which have gotten him a scarcely believable 24 Grammys, plus placements in the Songwriters Hall of Fame and Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Jay-Z owns several businesses and is worth a billion smackaroos at the minimum. You can see his mug in movies like State Property 2002, Paper Soldiers 2002, and Made in America 2013. On December 1, 1999, Jay-Z stabbed a record producer he believed was bootlegging his fourth studio album. The venue was the Kit Kat Club, and the device used went into and out of the victim without doing much damage. Arrested and released on a $50,000 bond, Jay-Z pled guilty to third-degree assault and only received a three-year probation. Reportedly, he forked over $600,000 to the victim, as a result of which, that fella stopped cooperating with prosecutors, thereby making it possible for Jay-Z to walk free. Steven Seagal, Sexual Assault Steven Frederick Seagal was born in Michigan in 1952. He married and ran a dojo, making his big screen debut in Above the Law, 1987. While that movie was quite successful, Under Siege 1992 eclipsed it. Other movies and TV shows followed, with Exit Wounds 2001 perhaps the most notable. Movies apart, Seagal fancies himself an excellent guitar player and has released two studio albums, neither of which made much of a splash. He has often been derided as humorless and a poser, and there's a long string of sexual assault allegations against him. In 1991, multiple women accused him of sexual harassment, and he paid 50 k to two of them in an out-of-court settlement. In 1995, a sexual harassment and employment discrimination lawsuit against him was dismissed, and in 2010, he was sued for sexual harassment, trafficking of females, wrongful termination, and failure to stop sexual harassment, with the suit being consequently withdrawn without explanation. In 2017, multiple women, including Katherine Heigl, said Steven Seagal had harassed them, and the following year, a couple of women accused him of forcing himself onto them. Mark Wahlberg, Racial Hate Crimes Born in 1971 in Boston, Mark first found fame at the age of 13 as a member of the New Kids on the Block boy band. In 1990, he along with others formed Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, with the lead singer from their debut album becoming a number one hit in multiple countries and spending an incredible 20 weeks on the Billboard Hot 100. The band went on to release video games that flopped madly, with their second album also being a dud. Marky Mark made his acting debut in The Substitute, a movie about a teacher who has a penchant for killing those who cheat on or seek to replace her. Movies like The Perfect Storm 2000, Planet of the Apes 2001, and The Departed 2006 showed his range, 
and he has played lead roles in the Transformers franchise and served as the executive producer of Entourage, Boardwalk Empire, How to Make It in America, Ballers, and McMillian. Now, in June 1986, a 15-year-old Mark Wahlberg shouted racial epithets and threw rocks at some black kids, repeating the feat the following day. In August 1986, he was sued for violating the civil rights of these kids, with the case being settled the next month. Then in April 1988, he shouted racial epithets at an old Asian fella and knocked him out with a wooden stick, attacking another old Asian guy that same day. Marky Mark was arrested on attempted murder charges, but only pled guilty to felony assault. Rebecca Gayhart, Vehicular Manslaughter Born in Kentucky in 1971, Rebecca Gayhart started as a model and moved to New York in her teens to attend an acting school. Gayhart first got national notice in the 90s for her Noxzema commercials. Her first major role was in Loving, an ABC soap opera that ran from 1983 to 1995. And she's been in Nothing to Lose, 1997, Scream 2, 1997, Urban Legend, 1998, Shadow Hours, 2000, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, 2019. On June 13, 2001, Gayhart was at the wheel of an automobile that struck and killed a nine-year-old as he ran across a Los Angeles street. She paid for the funeral of the kid and later that year entered a no-contest plea to vehicular manslaughter charges. Her punishment was 750 hours of community service, a $2,800 fine, and a 12-month suspension of her driving license. And that, to us, looks like a light slap on the wrist. The boy's parents later filed a wrongful death suit, but an out-of-court settlement took care of that. Dan Schneider, Alleged Bullying and Sexism Daniel James Schneider got saddled with bit part roles for much of the 1980s, he essentially gave up his acting career to become a screenwriter and producer, and is the fella behind iCarly, Victorious, Sam and Cat, and Henry Danger. In 2018, Nickelodeon gave him the boot, with later reports stating that he had anger issues and had been emotionally abusive to his subordinates. And oh, this guy often requested massages from his staff, sometimes had the child stars he worked with do things or wear stuff that was not age appropriate and reportedly said pervy stuff to these kids. Do you think he needs to be sent to jail? Let us know in the comments. Matthew Broderick, Vehicular Slaughter Matthew Broderick kicked off his career on Broadway. War Games, 1983, made him a major star and a known face on the big screen. That surprise blockbuster had a budget of $12 million, grossed $125 million worldwide, got nominated for a trio of Academy Awards, currently has a 93% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and has spawned a slew of video games. Movies like Glory, 1989, Godzilla, 1998, and The Last Shot, 2004, followed. And the guy currently has a couple of Tony Awards in his kitty and has been inducted into both the Hollywood Walk of Fame and the American Theatre Hall of Fame. Now, in August 1987, Matthew Broderick was tooling around the merry roads of Northern Ireland in a BMW 316i, with Jennifer Grey of Dirty Dancing fame perched all pretty in the passenger seat. For reasons that have never been made clear, he swerved from his lane into another lane and had a head-on collision with a Volvo. The mother and daughter occupants of the Volvo instantly became dearly departed, with Grey suffering severe whiplash and Matthew getting a concussion, a collapsed lung, fractured legs, and ribs in messy shape. Matthew Broderick told the police he was unable to remember why he had crossed into the wrong lane and was initially charged with causing death by dangerous driving, facing a maximum sentence of five years in the slammer. The charges were later downgraded to careless driving and he was fined $175. The family of the victims have rightfully derided the whole thing as a travesty of justice. Snoop Dogg, First Degree Murder Born in California, the young Snoop rapped in school and sold illicit substances when he could. Soon after school, he started getting into trouble with the law, but Dr. Dre heard a song of his and took him under his wing. Soon enough, Doggy Style came out and folks got all shaken, 
with many other albums and singles later rolling off the Snoop train, bending minds and setting records. Now, while Snoop is mainly known as a rapper, he is an entertainer and has appeared in a lot of movies and TV shows, usually as himself. Snoop Dogg, unsurprisingly, has a rap sheet a mile long and two kilometers wide and has been arrested a lot of times for the unlawful possession of drugs. In August 1993, while putting Doggy Style together, he and his bodyguard were hauled in for shooting a gang rival to death. Both men were successfully defended by Johnny Cochran of O.J. Simpson fame, with their 1996 acquittal being aided by massive police incompetence. Click here to see 15 actors currently rotting in jail. See you there.